What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with our part whole model in division. This is one of my favorite things to do with tape diagrams or bar models or strip diagrams, whatever you want to call it. Be careful calling it strip diagrams in class. Okay, that could get weird. Um, we love these and we want you to love them too. So let's rip off the tape and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to develop a part whole model to solve a division word problem. So we're not going to go through this a lot because hopefully if you're on uh, lesson six of our unit, you have seen the part whole model, you've done it with addition, you've done it with subtraction, and you did the last lesson with multiplication. That's where this really needs to start before you do this one um, because you have to have that basic understanding of the equal groups and labeling the different parts because that's what's going to help you teach your students or figure out what to do when you are doing division. But a part whole model visually shows the relationship of the different parts to the whole. So when would you use this, right? So today we're gonna be focused on when you're given the whole and you want to find the parts. Your key thoughts, same thing as the last lesson. Number one, you wanna show the correct relationship between the numbers. Number two, you want to label the model correctly. And then number three, you wanna be neat, right? It has to at least have some level of neatness where you can read it um, and you can understand what's happening when you do this. So this is the same question as the last time, except now we're giving you the whole, right? And you're trying to find how many is in each group. So if you remember, um, and you know this, multiplication is repeated addition. You have to understand, and your students have to understand, that the multiplication sign says groups of, okay? So if you have five groups of something, that's gonna equal 30. So here you would have your part whole model, okay? And you're gonna have five equal groups. You want Again, you wanna be neat, okay? It might not be exactly equal, but you wanna make it as equal as possible. 30 is your whole. And then you have one, two, three, four, five groups. And you're trying to figure out how many is in each group. Uh, if you don't have an awesome way for your students to remember what multiplication is, check out our What is Multiplication song. You can see the link right here. It talks about what the different factors mean, okay? Um, and then understanding that the place, their place in the multiplication equation means something. So here we have five groups of something not five in each group, very important. So here you have 30, okay? And you have five equal groups. And this takes us back to division. When you have a number and you are splitting it into equal groups, that is division. So to solve for this, your equation be 30 divided by five equals six, which means there would be six in each of the groups. So five groups of six equal 30. I love, 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 love this because it's going to be helping your students not just memorize that, okay, if you're finding a missing factor, you divide, but really seeing the inverse operation because a multiplication in division equation, right, their fact families are inverse operations. They're going to look the same when you do them visually. And that's why I love this. It really helped my students understand that connection between multiplication and division. Okay, so here we have our I do problem. It says there are 128 pins to be put into pouches for students. Each pouch can hold four pins. How many pouches do they need? So this is a word problem. So I'm gonna do my sides check strategy. Okay, if you don't know what that is, check out our video on it. It's an awesome strategy. If you don't have one for your students, we're gonna start with our statement. So how many pouches do they need? So my statement's gonna say, they need blank pouches. All right, so I'm gonna go back and I identify anything about pouches. Uh, there are 128 pins. Okay, that's not important to me right now, but then they're gonna be put into pouches. Okay, so now it's important that it's 128 pins. Your students should always be able to tell you why they're identifying something. It's not because it's a number, it's because those pins are going into pouches and my statement is about pouches. Each pouch, let's circle that a thousand times, can hold four pins. Okay, the word each is not telling me to multiply or divide. The word each is telling me that one pouch can hold four pins. Okay, so I'm gonna have an equal groups, I'm gonna have equal groups of something, okay? How many pouches do they need? This question right here, um, again, when I first started teaching, my students struggled with, and they struggled with it because I struggled with it. I knew that I was dividing, okay? I just didn't know how to explain to them why they were dividing. And so a lot of times, and this probably happens to you, they're gonna multiply 128 pins times four pins and somehow magically thinks that equals pouches, right? Because if you multiply 128 times four, that's what you're saying. I'm gonna multiply pins times pins, and that's gonna give me a pouch. That doesn't make any sense. But I didn't really know how to explain that to them. That's why I love this tape diagram. If you walk through this and teach your students the thought process, you're gonna turn them into independent thinkers. And my students started crushing these types of problems because they're able to think through it. So the word each 
told me I'm going to be doing a part hole model. Not because it's a magic word, but because it told me each pouch can hold four pins. I'm going to be having equal groups of something. So let me go ahead and start with that. Okay. Now this goes back to what we talked about last lesson. There are three different pieces of a part hole model. All right. You have your groups up here. You have your parts. Okay. How many is in each of those groups? And then you have your hole. Go back to this key thought that's shown up down here that the parts in the whole have to be the same thing. All right. If you are trying to build a Mr. Butler, you can't take the pieces of Mrs. Butler and build a Mr. Butler, right? We're not the same. Okay. We're, we're not the same thing. Your parts have to be the same as your whole. And right now my thought process is, okay, I have pins and pins. And because there are only three pieces of a part whole model, if both of these are pins, that means either the 128 is going to be my pieces or the 128 is going to be my hole. And then the pins would be the other thing. We're teaching them the thought process, okay? So I know I have 128 and four. All right, well, which one goes inside and which one is my hole? Well, right here, it said each pouch can hold four pins. So I know that the four pins are going to be how much is in each because it told me that, okay? which means 128 pins is going to be the whole. So I have four pins in each, 128 pins. Pins and pins, again, the parts and the whole have to be the same thing, which means I'm missing my groups up here. I have two of the parts filled, I don't have my groups, and my groups are gonna be the pouches. Each pouch, right, one pouch holds four pins. Another pouch holds four pins. Another pouch holds four pins. So I'm gonna put a dot, dot, dot right here, I'm actually gonna erase this for, and I'm looking for how many pouches do I need to hold 128 pins? So that thought process of being able to walk through that will be difficult at first, but once they get the hang of it, that's where they're really gonna take off. So this is a division problem. This is a quotative division problem, okay? Um, typically the partitive division problems are a lot easier because that's where it's gonna say they were split into four in each, or they divided them into five people in each, or the question is going to say, how many are in each group? And that's something a lot of teachers teach as a key word. Okay, if, it's in the, if each is in the question, you're dividing. Well, stop teaching that. Start teaching them this so they can think through it. Because really, this is a multiplication equation. Blank groups of four are going to equal 128. But to solve it, you have to rewrite this as division and say, okay, if I take 128 and put four in each group, how many pouches will I need? So you're starting to show them the relationship between multiplication and division in a visual way that they can see, and that's gonna help them down the road. And then you can teach them any way you want to divide, it doesn't matter, and then 128 divided by four is going to equal 32. So you would need 32 pouches to hold 128 pens. Now, if your students don't have a thought process and they get the answer 512 because they multiply these, you know if this is a multiple choice test, you know 512 is gonna be an answer choice. So we have to have a way to protect them from rushing and to go back and look at it and to go back and understand. Now, I know I'm talking a lot for this one, but I'm so excited about this. And if you take this and apply it to your classroom, you're gonna see amazing things happen as long as you stick with it and hold the kids accountable showing it. When you look at this, this looks like a lot of work, right? It lo this, look this is crazy up here. But if you took it and you did it one step at a time, everybody can write a statement. Everybody can identify. You can teach them, okay, wait a minute, you're doing a, multi, you're doing a part whole model. Okay, well, how do you know which numbers go where? Okay, teach them about the parts in the whole. And then you're missing the groups right there. Oh, that makes sense. The groups are my pouches because each pouch held four pins, right? And you're teaching them how to think through that. And then look at this when they get done. The accomplishment that they feel that they know how to do this, that they understand the inverse operations of multiplication and division is going to make them competent in themselves. And you're going to see them take off in every other aspect of their math. Okay. And so that's why I love this. This was awesome because this was a struggle for me to teach, a struggle for my students. But once I started doing these tape diagrams and teaching them not just what to do, but why they're doing it, they took off. So, let's so what we want you to take with you, okay, put on your cassette tape, we want you to know that part whole models can help develop understanding of inverse operations. If you notice the multiplication and division were the same, it's still equal groups, both of them are equal groups. 
And that's going to lead you into fractions because fractions and divisions are the same thing. And it gets crazy and it's awesome because they start visually seeing that it's all connected. And that's what we want. We want to build conceptual masters of math. So when they get into the abstract of algebra, they can visualize what they're doing. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options. We would love for you to subscribe, to like the video, comment, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can email us, instructthebeats at gmail.com. Please follow us on all our social media accounts. We'd love to have you. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats, out.